Okay, so we're right in the middle of retro week here on GMBN. Hopefully you've seen those retro t-shirts, super cool. Not wearing one today, it's really muddy. And I thought it's time to do a how-to, how to ride your retro bike fast. And that actually got me thinking, is it possible to ride a retro bike fast? So I've dug out my oldest bike. This is my very first mountain bike. It's a 1990 Kona Lava Dome, and I'm gonna take this off-road for the first time in a very long time and try and ride it fast. Right, this is a Kona Lava Dome from 1990, or it might be 1989. I find it quite hard to find all the details about it, to be honest. But I bought this bike in 1995, I think, for about 200 pounds. And this is my first ever proper mountain bike. Back in the day when a mountain bike basically did everything. There was not really downhill bikes or cross-country bikes at that time. Basically bought this bike to ride off-road. I used it for my paper round and for racing downhill when I very first started out. Obviously now it's a real dog's dinner to look at. It's got a mismatch of bits. I'm missing the original Project 2, which was in that splatter paint. I upgraded to a Marzocchi XCR, I think it was called, and blew it up. It really wasn't up to the type of riding I was doing, but still some original parts. Still got some wheels that I upgraded to. Some Shimano XT hubs from the mid 90s. They're still going strong, never had new bearings in there. Snowflake front wheel, if you've seen that. Uh, you don't get those anymore, definitely not very strong. Also, these wheels aren't very straight and I've got V-brakes on this bike, another upgrade. And actually, they do rub quite a lot because nowadays, obviously, pretty much all bikes come with disc brakes. It doesn't really matter if your rims are a little bit buckled. Okay, I have upgraded some parts. I've put some cheap V-brakes on there because I use this bike as my pub bike and my commuter now. And it's got a mismatch of bits I've found in the back of my garage. So, got new Shimano cheap cranks, some old Crank Brothers pedals. Got a brand new uh, XT rear max, the other one broke. I've got some new Trail King Conti tires in there because the old ones are just basically threadbare. So some stuff has been upgraded. Of course, it's the same old geometry. So I want to see basically how it rides today. Riding this bike cross country felt all right, actually. Yes, yeah, definitely rough, definitely quite jittery, but it sort of feels efficient. Obviously, it's a uh, fully rigid bike, pretty light as well, and it feels like every paddle stroke really gets you somewhere. It's hard to compare it to a modern cross country bike they're winning, like the XCO race on now, that are mainly full suspension with lockouts and drop posts and things, but in a sort of nostalgic way, riding cross country felt all right. Now it's time for the downhill track and putting a timer on that and it feels really sketchy already, just riding it up the fire road to the top. I can't believe I used to race downhill on this bike. The, the bars on it feel really low. It feels like it's gonna be just sketchy, like hardly any uh, grip because there's just no suspension, of course. The tires are pretty thin. It's all I could find actually online is 2.2s on 26 inch wheels. So I'm definitely not gonna have much grip. As you can tell, it's raining and I've got rim brakes. Yes, they're V-brakes, but already look at the state of that sort of gray muck you get on the rim. They're gonna take a couple of revolutions to start working properly. So they're not gonna be very good. Uh, so I'm starting to feel a little bit nervous about trying to ride this bike fast down a hill. When I raced it, I used to have a suspension fork on the front, which definitely helps, but also it jacks the front end up just enough to make it feel all right. So at the moment, this feels super low. I'm getting a bit worried.
drive, that was so sketchy. Like this is with the back brake fully on, hitting the bar. Please don't make me do that again, Jack. The Kona Lava Dome was just like the other bikes at the time. This was before super lightweight cross country bikes or even full suspension downhill bikes. So that was your all round mountain bike. So I think it's quite good to compare it to something like this. This is my Canyon Spectral, a trail bike, mid travel. You can buy a bike like this down the budget end of things for about a thousand pounds, your entry level mountain bikes. Or you can get a Canyon Spectral like this. Yes, it's got the 2020 Shimano XT on there, the luxuries of brand new RockShox suspension, which is definitely going to make a difference. But I think it is the geometry, the suspension, the components that make these bikes so capable. So how much faster are they? So can you ride a retro bike fast? Well, somewhat. It definitely feels fast until you get some perspective, then you realize actually how slow you're going. It's a really difficult thing to ride, especially in those conditions. And I know I'm gonna get called out saying that some of these parts of the bike aren't completely original. To be honest, it didn't really matter because the things that really sort of let this bike down are the old school geometry, in fact, the brakes were terrible. By the end of the day, the rear brake wasn't working at all. So I can now pull it, hit the bar, and it does nothing, even though it still rubs on the rim. So on the cross country, I was two minutes slower on this bike. 16 minutes on my new bike, 18 minutes on the old bike, and it felt really hard. I guess it was kind of new XCO style where there's roots, it's kind of technical not a lot of smooth stuff. And even on the climbs, I was bouncing over those routes, especially on the downhills, I was pulling as hard as I could on the brakes. And sometimes when my bike was bouncing, it was leaving the ground. And that's when the front wheel was locking up as it went light, because the bike was just moving around all over the place. So it's difficult to compare it to a full suspension bike, but it's definitely a bone shaker. Uh, on the downhill track, again, much slower as you'd expect. It felt really, really slow. And it really was down to the brakes as much as anything. 2 minutes 20 on my Canyon Spectral, 3 minutes dead on this bike. So you can't ride them very fast, but that's not the point. It was good fun riding this bike again, taking it off-road, getting it back into its natural habitat. I think you would have to upgrade it quite a lot more to make this bike work nearly as well as a modern hardtail. But it's fun to do it and it's time to retire this bike back to its commuting status, I think. And Stick my mug guards back on it, stick my slicks back on it, and that's what it shall be. Right, hope you've enjoyed Retro Week. There's plenty more to come this week. Uh, check out these t-shirts, if you see it up there, but this is one I helped design. These are available in the shop now. If you want to see some more videos from Retro Week, click over there for those ones. Thumbs up if you like watching me get bounced around on a very old bike.